good evening
Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. Today is Friday, so that's very good. We're going to rest this weekend. So we're going to start the class as usual. We're going to check about the platform and uh, what will be the objectives for tonight. So this is the class of tonight, and this is the question for this class. For tomorrow, I mean, for today, we have to finish the homework 3.5. And it's going to be very easy just for you to click on the right option for this one. Okay, so we are going to start by checking the attendance, of course. So tomorrow is the Children's Day. So happy Children's Day for everybody. And we start October. So 2022 is almost done. Ada, Susana Cáceres, Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Oh, thank you, Maria Alejandra. And uh, Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so we are going to start the class and uh, we're gonna start with a video tonight. So this is about what we were checking. So this is CPA CSR theories. It's a good one, so it's not that long. So here we go, my friends. And of course, at the end, you will tell me any comments or any opinions about the video that we just, well, that we will be watching right now. So. There are a range of CSR theories that try and explain either why we should pursue corporate social responsibility or explain why we actually do it. Normative theories focus on what we ought to do or what we should be doing. They focus on what is right from a particular perspective. Normative stakeholder theory is an example of a specific normative theory. From this perspective, it is ethical or appropriate to focus on all stakeholders, not just the shareholders. This is based on a sense of duty and values, which indicates that all stakeholders are valuable and worthy and should be treated with respect. This is different to treating stakeholders properly because you think it'll be in your own best interest. So it takes a deontological perspective, which means the intention behind the action is just as important as the action itself. A positive theory is one that is used to describe how people and organisations actually behave. They are descriptive and are used to help predict activity rather than to advise people how they ought to behave. Institutional theory is an example of a positive theory that explains why organisations end up performing CSR and corporate accountability. The underlying premise here is that organisations are influenced by peer pressure. If other organisations in the industry start acting responsibly, then they will imitate this action. The starting point may be a coercive action by a powerful lobby group or the government. This gets one or more organisations moving and then mimetic behaviour, which is the mimicking or copying of others, leads to group norms and peer pressure about how an organisation should behave. All of these actions together explain why competitors start acting in a similar way. 
Homogenization or isomorphism are the terms used to describe this process. Enlightened self-interest can be considered as both a normative and a positive theory. Using an ethical egoism perspective, this means that from a normative perspective, it is ethical for an organisation to pursue its own best interests. And this often involves being nice to stakeholders, just so that you can get what you want from them. Enlightened self-interest is also a descriptive or positive theory, which describes how companies actually behave. They pursue CSR, but only because it's useful to them, not because it has intrinsic worth of its own. Sometimes the word greenwashing is used to describe corporate reporting and action that tries to show how good a company is in relation to CSR when the true motives are more self-interested. Managerial stakeholder theory is a more cynical approach to looking after stakeholders and this involves identifying those with the most power and influence. Steps are taken to work closely with these powerful interest groups, but the main underlying reason is linked to manipulation and gaining self-interested benefits. So this approach explains CSR activity and helps show why an organisation may care for some stakeholders, but not others, especially those who are weak and unable to influence the outcome. To recap, there are a range of ethical theories that help demonstrate reasons why we might consider CSR and corporate accountability. These range from enlightened self-interest to normative and managerial stakeholder theory through to institutional theory. Okay, what did you get from this one? Anybody? No comments about the video? About some of the things that he said. Normative, for example. And teacher, I, I understand um, that uh, in a team, we need to involve all the uh, stakeholder or the 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 parts that in in the in the matter, because as an image uh, saying with no words, but with the image itself, that every stakeholder contributes in some way. So it's important to treat them with respect, all of them, because um, everybody has some, something to, to give to the brainstorm or, I don't know, the possible solution. So it's important to take in consideration all the perspective, all the views, and treat them with uh, respect. So uh, it's a good practice uh, do that. Okay, very well, very good. So that was it. I know that the names of the theories were kind of strange, like the egoistical so that happens i mean that they all everything has a name you know and uh, we were saying before that sometimes there are some companies or individuals that they they try uh, to do this kind of program but not because it's the correct thing or because they want to help the society sometimes they do it because it's going to sell more things i mean people are going to come more to my companies to get my products if we do it like that uh, so at the end, that is not the real purpose of this one. The real purpose is to to help society, to help our employees, to to care about important things, and of course to get profit. Do you remember the video yesterday? So both are important. To get profit, definitely it's very important, but also to help people to to invest in some way of a program. So we can help our customers, our employees, and the society in general. 
any other comment on the video? No more, okay. So we are going to check a little bit about the book. So a uh, corporate social responsibility, how to use verbs followed by infinitives or gerunds, no change in meaning. Okay, so this is a little grammar. I know that you love grammar. Juan Miguel, could you please help us and read this chart? Okay, some verbs. This verb, this okay? Yeah, please. Okay, some verbs um, can, can only be followed by a gerund. Some can only be followed by an infinitive. Some can be followed by either form with no change in meaning. For example, begin, can't stand, continue, love, like, start, hate, and prefer. There is no difference in meaning in the following examples, the agent be began, yeah, began, began talking about the potential benefits from corporate social responsibility. 1B, the agent began to talk about the potential benefits from corporate social responsibility. 2A, I can't stand thinking about companies who don't protect the environment to be. I can't stand to think about companies who don't protect the environment. <clears throat> 3A, we love being a sustainable and responsible business. 3B, we love to be a sustainable and responsible business. 4A, some companies start preparing Social social media programs because they have been forced to do so. For B, some companies start to prepare social programs because they have been forced to do so. Very well. So this is it. There are some verbs that can be followed by either a gerund or an infinity. Those verbs are this one. Begin can't stand. Do you remember what is can't stand? What is that? Maybe like uh, you can't uh, stop. Uh, in this case, no, in this case, I can't stand. It's like uh, can't stand could be like uh, to hold, maybe? It's not to hold. Uh, well, can stand, when we say can stand, it's like, uh, I I don't like it at all. Uh, I, yeah. I hate it. I can't stand. For example, I can stand uh, my neighbors when they set the music very, very out loud. So something like that. Okay. I, I was thinking about, I can't stand, it's about like, a, como no aguanto, or something, something like, like that. this. I can't, I can't stand, I can avoid, it's something like, I am not able to avoid, okay, so uh, the two meanings are are good, I mean, you can say I I, I won't be able to avoid, or it's unsuff unsufferable, something like that. Okay. Good. Continue, love, like, start, hate, and prefer. So those are the verbs that if we, I mean, but this is very important. It's going to mean the same as long as the whole sentence is the same, okay? Because actually after we check the book, well, I'm gonna show you another, another website where you will see that sometimes you can use either this and the other one, but if you change the sentence, sometimes it means another thing. So in the examples that we have here, you see that we can exchange a gerund or an infinitive. And of course, since the sentence is exactly the same, the meaning is not going to change. Okay, not at all. So we have uh, four but examples. Just, okay. so, sorry, teacher, just with that, uh, with, with this uh, who are in the chart or are more, 
There are, there are a few are more, you... but these are like the most common. The most common are these. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So because this is like grammar, like rules and we need to remember. So for begin, can stand, continue, love, like, start, hate, and prefer. We can use either a gerund or a uh, an infinitive. So that will be it. It's no big deal by now. Next week, actually, we're going to check the ones that uh, is going to change. By now, we don't worry about that, okay? So um, do you have any questions about this? Not at the moment, teacher. Not for me. Okay. So now you are going to write. And I'm going to give you the time for you to write and then tell us uh, what are the examples, okay? And this is going to be, well, it says that it's with a partner, but we're going to do it individual, okay? So it's going to be with the verse. Continue, prefer, hate, like, start, and begin, okay? And as you can see, you are going to write both with infinitive, and gerunds. So let's give it a shot. I will give you a few minutes and uh, just write the two examples on any of this verse. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, take in consideration that you can use the verb in any tense, right? Past, present, future, whatever you want to write.
Uh, teacher, I have a question. Uh, the bears are those uh, continue love life star heading to the bird. I'm sorry, what is the question? Could you please repeat? The bears that we have to use in this exercise are those those on continue love life star hate and prefer. Uh, I don't know if you can scroll down to see the verse. Uh, yes, or are the same. It's going to ah, be continue okay. prefer hate like the same. Okay. Yeah. The same that are in the top. Yeah, yeah that's okay. why I leave it like that so you can check but it's not prefer is not include or yes include but it's in different order yeah the same the same exactly okay, okay so, of course the verb that is after that one is the one that you can change do you need more time i guess i guess all right i'm gonna give you a few more minutes
Okay, have you finished? Do you need more time? Okay, let's check together. So I'm going to ask you, for example, for continue for, I'm going to ask you two or three people, and then we're going to move to the other back, okay? So, Jose Rivas, could you please tell us your two examples of continue? Not possible, okay. Juan Miguel Bran. Okay. Uh, I continue to read more about CRS. No, CSR. To implement on my job. Okay, and the other way around? I continue reading more about CS. CSR, no, CRS, okay? No, ah. <laughs> I get confused. <laughs> okay, CSR. CSR, okay. I uh, continue reading more about CSR to implement on my job, to Very implement good. a program, maybe. Okay? okay, perfect, good. Marcus, continue. Okay. Um. I continue asking myself why. Okay, and the other way around? I continue to ask myself why. Okay, that is it, very good. Now we go to prefer Roberto Orellana. Not possible, Maria Alejandra. She's with Roberto. Ileana Giselle. Not possible. Jose Wilfredo. Can I teacher? Okay, please go ahead. Prefer. Prefer. Um maybe <laughs> I didn't do the exercise because I still I still working, but okay. I think that I prefer to drink coffee at breakfast. Very good. And how is it going to be with the jar? I prefer drinking coffee at breakfast or in good. breakfast. At breakfast, yeah. At breakfast, okay. Very good. Prefer. That's nice. Uh well let's do it open, okay? Anybody else wants to share prefer? Other person? We're gonna check just two. Another person that wants to share prefer. Uh, um, sorry, teacher, I'm driving. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, be careful prefer, there. Prefer we in both ways. Yeah, sure. and yeah in both ways. In the yeah. The thing is okay. that uh, these verbs, uh, you can follow, they can be followed by either a gerund or a um, gerund uh, or uh, an infinitive. So uh, okay. you can, uh, we're providing examples with preferred and other verbs in both ways. Okay. Um, well, I I wrote uh, some very, <laughs> very simple. Um, okay. She prefers eating pupusas instead of tamales. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> she prefers to eat pupusas instead of tamales. Very good, that is it. Perfect, nice. Okay, another person that wants to share with hate. I don't know if I, I, I will try. I don't know if I'm correct. Go for it. I hate to be late at work. Good. And on the other, it will be, I hate missing. No, no, no. I hate losing money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is fine. Very good. Yeah, both is possible. So very nice. Okay. Good. Uh, with hate, one other person, please. Me. <laughs> okay. okay, go yeah. ahead. He hates he hates walking 
behind people who walk very slowly. <laughs> Good. And the other way around? Sorry, did you... uh, Yeah, the other with the gerund. Ah, uh, um, I, um, I don't know if I understand very well the, the exercise, but I just write wrote the, the same just to change the, the in in this case to work. Uh, yeah, that will be. Uh, so could you please uh, share uh, that as well? He he hates to walk behind people who walk very slowly. Perfect. Very good. Thank you. So the next verb is like. Anybody wants to share with like? Me teacher. Go ahead. I like Taking a nap after lunch, and I like to take a nap after lunch. Perfect. That is it. Thank you, Heidi. One more person with like. Anybody else wants to share with like? Okay, nobody else. Start. Anybody wants to share with start? Let me try with like. Okay, go ahead. I like to be honest at all. Okay. And with the gerund? Uh, eh, he likes dancing rumba. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that is good. Perfect. Thank you. So now let's go with start. Anybody wants to share with start? Me. I okay. start to prepare the documentation about CSR at the office. Good. And the other, other way around? I start preparing preparing um, the documentation about CSR to implement at the office. Okay. Very good. Perfect. That is it. One more person with start. Teacher and um, for example, can be used moral verbs like may no wool wool is moral verb. No. Yeah, you can use it with with wool. I mean, I will start. You can say that or she mm -hmm. will start. Yeah, in okay. any tense, in past, in present, whatsoever, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same rule. He will start. Let me start. We'll start. He will start eating healthy. Okay, to that's a good one. Be on shape. Shape. On oh, shape. Very good. And the other way around? Uh, he, um, you say that can be, okay. Can I use he started walking? No, must be. No, you can use it. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. a good one. Yeah. He started, he started exercising a gym uh, every week okay very good every week so that is very good nice good examples mm -hmm. last one is begin so who wants to share with begin i will okay i begin to do exercise to lose weight very good i begin to lose uh, to do exercise and with the gerund uh, i i began mm, we began right the games yeah begin <sighs> I began doing, I began doing exercise for health. Okay, very good. So that is it, my friends. As you can see, in these verbs, we can use either or. I mean, we can use either 
a gerund or a uh, in an infinitive. So that will be it. And uh, well, I had this other thing here. So similar meaning. Sometimes there are other verbs that might have. I mean, it's possible to use both. Here are other verbs, as I was telling you, can bear. Do you remember that I told you that there were a little bit more verbs? Can bear, can stand, we check that one, cease, continue, hate, like, love, and neglect, prefer, and propose. So as you can see, the examples here, we can use either a um, an infinitive or a, um, a gerund. And uh, if we write the same sentence, it's going to be exactly the same. Okay, so here uh, there are like the same sentence. He can bear being alone. He can bear to be alone. The meaning is exactly the same. Nancy can stand working the lay shift. Nancy can stand to work the lay shift. Exactly the same. The government ceased providing free health care. The government ceased to provide free health care. Exactly the same. She continued talking. She continued to talk, same meaning. He hates cleaning dishes. He hates to clean dishes. Samantha likes reading. Samantha likes to read. We love scuba diving. We love to scuba dive. Love is another one. Neglect. He neglected doing his daily chores. He neglected to do his daily chores. Uh, prefer is one that we checked already. He prefers eating at 7 p.m. He prefers to eat at 7 p.m. Propose. Drew proposed paying for the trip. Drew proposed to pay for the trip. So here you can see other verbs. There are not that many, but there are other verbs. So not that many. Can bear is one of those. Cease, a, um, love, neglect, propose. So what is interesting is this. So although the differing in meanings is small with these particular verbs in gerunds and infinitives can offer be used interchangeable. There is still a meaning difference. Using a gerund suggests that you are referring to real activities or experiences. Using an infinitive suggests that you are talking about potential or possible activities or experiences. So yes, the verb is the same and the sentence is the same. Uh, and if you can change the gerund and the infinitive is going to be the same. But um, yes, uh, of course, the infinitive is for one thing and the gerund is going to be for one thing. So please remember that if you use a gerund, it's more referring to real activities, something that are experiences. But if you use an infinitive, is more inclined to potential or possible activities. So the meaning in a sentence, if it's exactly the same and you change gerunds and infinitive, it's going to be ex the same, the same. But if we analyze uh, that specific difference, I mean, if there is a difference between infinitive and gerunds, yes, there is. So one refers to real activities and the other to possible. And here are some examples on that one. For example, the British reporter likes living in New York. That means that he lives in New York and he likes what he experiences there. So living means that he experienced that one. He actually is experiencing the activity. But if we say the British supporter likes to live in New York whenever he works in the United States, he likes the option or possibility of living in New York when he works in the United States. So that will be the meaning. Of course, the sentences are different. So the meaning definitely is going to be totally different because it says whenever he works in the United States. But yes, if we keep the British reporter likes to live in New York, uh, the meaning is going to be the same and there is a little slight difference, but it's going to be very, very depending on the context of the whole conversation, okay? The, the other example says, I like speaking French because it's such a beautiful language. I like the experience of speaking French and the way it makes me feel when I speak the language. And if I say I like to speak French when I'm in France, I prefer the option of speaking French when I am in France. It's an option because right now I am not in France. But as you can see, it's not only the gerund and the infinitive, but it's also the context. 
So if we are going to speak about something that is a potential, we can use, we cannot use a gerund. So that is why this is important. We cannot use a gerund there. We are going to use a um, infinitive. And on the other hand, if we are going to speak in a speech or a, in any conversation about an experience, something that is actually happening, then we're going to use a gerund and not an infinitive. So those things are important. But if it's the same sentence and only the sentence with no context and no conversation that can tell you if this is potential or is a real experience, then the meaning is exactly the same. The same meaning for the whole thing. Do you have any questions about this? Maybe just that you just explain that it's a it's a likely difference between the gerund and the infinitive. Uh, just for me, it's just just to to remember uh, what this is talking about: real activities or experiences, and the other is about potential. Or possible or possible activities. Yeah, just that. For me, it's clear. That is it. Very good. Yeah, we need to remember. Maybe the problem is that whenever we're speaking in English, sometimes we just use the grammar. Sometimes we use the grammar's property, but sometimes we forget about these little things. And that is when sometimes if you are speaking with people that only speak English, sometimes they don't understand that. They say, what? So you're talking about these or these kind of things. I just don't get it. Uh, so that's those are the little things that we need to remember. So remember that here in the advanced level, sometimes we are pulling our English. We are uh, getting like little details to be focused on. So we are careful on the way that we're speaking. Uh, but anyways, the most important thing by now is that you try to use it, right? To understand it and then try to use it. So if you understand it and you try to use it and then everything's going to be fine, okay? But it's not a big deal. I mean, actually it's not a big deal. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, actually we're gonna stop and we're gonna check about the attendance right now so we don't cut off on the next topic. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Ok. So let's move on. Let me just check. Teacher, just in case you didn't call me present. Oh, okay, perfect. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue with the book. So uh, this is the other grammar for the unit. It's very, very easy because this is not a big deal. It says how to organize a paragraph. So uh, let's see. Maria Alejandra, could you please help me reading this? Not possible. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, this uh, paragraph is a group of sentences that develops a main idea. A paragraph can, can stand by itself as a complete piece piece of reading. Writing. Or it writing, or it can be a section of a longer piece of writing, like an easy. You say. You say. The well develop develop paragraph as a topic sentence. The topic sentence express the main idea of the paragraph. Keep in mind that titles 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 uh -huh. titles are usual are usually single words or short or short phrase phrases. Phrase, uh -huh, phrases but the topic sentence of a paragraph must always be a complete sentence example <clears throat> lego is at the top corporate social responsibility responsibilities responsibility responsible uh, responsible sorry companies of this year with seven Seventy-four point four. Seventy-four point four. Having 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 jump for its fifth place last year. Okay, while a topic sentence present the main idea of a a paragraph, uh, all the other sentences there they propose to explain, extend, or support this general sentence. These other centers are supporting detail. They are used as pieces of evidence by wire, wire to writers. Make them, the writer to make the, the main idea of the paragraph from convincing, convincing. And inter, convincing and interesting to the readers. Example, in, a, in an analysis done by financial experts, Lego beat all other companies in the perception that it behaves ethically, conducts business, fairly, operates transparently, protects the environment, and supports worthy causes. Second, uh, Lego has embraced corporate, corporate social responsibility from top to bottom. The chief research officers, staff, and Griffin. Griffin. Okay. Uh -huh. A paragraph also needs to have a concluding sentence which has one main purpose to give the reader of a sentence of having arrive to satis satisfying ending of the topic discuss. Three, Lego build the chains and sustainable material center. The initiatives and in partnership with the World Wildlife Fund, Fund are part of the da Danish the company push for sustainability, sustainability. And sustainability and corporate social responsibility. Very good, perfect. It's very clear, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no big deal. So, a paragraph. So, what is a paragraph? It's a group of sentences, okay? In a paragraph, there is a main idea, okay? And the paragraph. And remember that this is English, it's different from Spanish. In a paragraph, we're going to have three parts. The first sentence is almost always the topic sentence that is going to explain what is the paragraph about. Then we have two, three, four, five other uh, parts of the paragraph that is going to be supporting details. So since we are speaking about this topic, there are some supporting details about this topic. And at the end, the third part is going to be like the closing, like uh, the ending of the topic discussed. So that is, that is a paragraph in English. 
And this is a good example for uh, here and on the pink ones, you can see Lego is at the top corporate social responsible companies of this year with 74.4 points, having jumped from its fifth place last year. So the topic is this one. We are speaking about that Lego and social responsible uh, program and how is one of the best, right? And then on the 2A and 2B, we have the supporting details. In an analysis done by financial experts, Lego beat all other companies in the perception that it behaves ethically, conduct business fairly, operates transparently, protects the environment and supports worthy causes. So here you can see that it's supporting the idea that uh, Lego uh, now is on the top of the corporate social responsible. Why? Uh, because they beat all other companies. There were some companies that were evaluated. And how did they beat them? Uh, because it behaves ethically, conducts business. So there are specific details on why Lego is at the top corporate social responsible companies, okay? In the 2B, it says Lego has embraced corporate social responsibility from top to bottom, says Chief Research Officer Stephen Han Griffiths. So one person, that is the Chief Research Officer, so is one of the experts that evaluated all the companies, is saying this, it's a quotation about something that he says. So the two, ideas here are supporting the main one, the topic sentence that is that Lego is at the top corporate social responsible companies, okay? And at the end, we have the closing. Lego's Build the Change and Sustainable Material Center initiatives and its partnership with the World Wildlife Fund are part of the Danish toy company's push for sustainability and corporate social responsibility. So this is like the closing. So they are working with this and this and this. They will continue growing. They will continue improving things like that. So uh, that is what this is about, a paragraph. As I was telling you before, we are getting into building uh, or the, the topics that we have checked this and the last module is uh, focused into writing an essay. So if you have the time, my friends, try to read about that one. Try to check the best way for you to write an essay. Because an essay is made of paragraphs. But of course, an essay has also an order. And it's going to, uh, it's going to be evaluated in that way. So it's very important by now. By now, uh, the, um, the one that we're checking here is how to build a paragraph. That will be it. Do you have any questions about what a paragraph is here in English? Question. Not for my part. It's very clear, right? It's not, uh, it's not a big deal, but anyway, sometimes it's possible that you have questions. Uh, if you have questions now or tomorrow or uh, Sunday at 2 in the morning, you can ask me. Probably I'm not going to answer it immediately, but I'm going to do it eventually. So we're going to do this exercise, read and organize the paragraph below using the model above, topic sentence, supporting details, and concluding sentence. And I'm going to read it so you understand what is this about. It says, their goal is to benefit their guests, employees, and businesses while making the company a desirable place to work through their consumer social responsibility efforts. As the largest media and entertainment conglomerate in the world, and aside from its constant imagineering, Disney has a tremendous responsibility to give back to those who have helped it become the powerhouse that it is today. The Walt Disney Company is one of the largest and most well-known corporations practicing corporate social responsibility, CSR, all the way down the line in their business model. Volunteerism is a major focus for Disney, offering free tickets to a million people in exchange for a day of volunteer service from an organization of their choice. This encouraged over 1 million people in the United States to commit the service of force to volunteer in their companies. That is it. So now I'm going to give you maybe two minutes. This is not a big deal for you to analyze. 
and then we're going to check which one is which one. Think about it. Okay, are you ready to check? I think so. Which one is the topic sentence? The third paragraph. The third one that yeah. says the Walt Disney Company. Yes. Good, everybody agrees? Yes. Very good, so that is it. The Walt Disney Company is one of the largest and most well-known corporations practicing corporate social responsibilities here start all the way down the line in their business model. So that is introduction, definitely. So what is going to be the ones that are supporting details? The last one. We have as the are the largest and the largest media and entertainment conglomerate. Okay. Yeah, the second one. As the largest media and entertainment conglomerate. So that is number two. And what is the other one you say? You say somebody, somebody said the other one. Yeah, actually you are right. I have the last one. I have two supporting. Yeah, it's going to be too supporting. As the largest media and entertainment conglomerate, and also voluntarism is a major focus. Uh, very good. Focus for Disney, offering free tickets for a billion people in exchange for the day of volunteering service from an organization of their choice. This is something that you can do, you know, to read about, about these kind of things as if you are in the news. So it's very nice, that one. It's a very good exercise. So number three, which one is number three? The last one, voluntarism. Okay, so somebody said that that is number two. Their goal is to benefit their guest. Ah, the closing is that one. Very good. So number three is going to be their goal is to benefit their guests, employees, and businesses while making the company a desirable place to work through the consumer social responsibility efforts. Good. Very good. So you can see it's very easy. Piece of cake. Now, my friends. Uh, we are going to do an exercise, okay? Uh, I'm going to stop this one. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to work in pairs, if possible. Let's see how many are we. Yeah, it's possible, I guess. So in pairs. And uh, what we're going to do is this, okay? I'm going to give you, of course, a few minutes on this one. Um, you are going to speak with the other peer, with the other uh, person here in the group. And you are going to tell about your company. What is the CSR program in the company like? Okay. And the other person is going to write a paragraph about that one with a topic with two ideas, supporting ideas, and a closing. 
And then you are going to share with everybody about this little thing. Okay, I will be moving in the break room. So if you want to tell me uh, or have questions, of course you can tell me. Okay, uh, is clear what we're gonna do? Do you have questions about what we're gonna do right now? No questions. Could, could you repeat, please? <laughs> uh, definitely. So, the step number one is that you are going to be with another person speaking about your company's CSR program. So, for example, I will tell you mine. Uh, there, uh, we do uh, a lot of volunteerism. Uh, we go and build houses or schools or paint things. Sometimes we uh, go and give presents in, for Christmas, for example, we give presents to elderly houses. I mean, houses where there are only elderly people. Sometimes we go and speak uh, with children that are in the orphanages. Uh, sometimes we provide English classes to schools, to, I mean, kids that they want to learn English. Sometimes uh, also there are, there's a program that, where we uh, go and teach other things to to kids, uh, for example, we teach uh, music, soccer, uh, things like that. We also donate uh, to other programs or foundations, a lot of money. And uh, we also uh, have like a contest every quarter, uh, anybody, any employee can come with an idea uh, or with a person that really needs something like a wheelchair. And if we present the idea and we expose what is the need, uh, the company gives the money for that one. So that is part of the, of the CSR program in my company. So I finish saying my thing and the other person is going to write a paragraph about what I say with a topic, with two at least uh, supporting ideas and a closing. And whenever we come back here to the group, you are going to read the paragraph to the whole class. It's now a little bit more clear. Do you have questions yet? It's okay for me. Anybody else has more questions? If you have questions, this is the moment. The moment of truth. Say it now or don't say it forever. Okay, so let's uh, go for it. So let's hope everybody can join that one. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna send you there right now.
National Scholarship Program. We think in teacher. It's not <laughs> Okay, don't worry. Take your time. As long as you understood and then you are moving on, no worries. I will give you the time. Yes. The idea is that we're writing a paragraph, right? Yeah. About a social program from our company. Well, what you are going to, Heidi, you are going to write a paragraph about Anna Claudia's program. Uh -huh, exactly. oh, we are thinking. Actually, it. we are doing the vice versa. <laughs> yes, okay. because I, right now uh, I think her job has more CSR programs. Oh, okay, good. Perfect. Take your time. Okay. So it will be national. Near to the to the to the houses that are right there, or there are close to the riders. So I remember that I saw that. Uh, okay. I guess that could be as a CSR. Okay, you were talking about to clean the lakes and the rivers. The community where he um, operates. The community operate. Where, uh -huh. where we or where you eat, I don't know, operate. Mm -hmm. Operate. Uh, this uh, by practicing a corporate. They, they don't have that initiative, but maybe in the future. Okay, okay. So pray all the things you say or help people. Yeah, but um, other other activity that they have for for help people is collect clothes.
Ah, sí. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. But today is Friday and you will mm -hmm. go to, <laughs> to rest. <laughs> yeah. We think we're, we're done, teacher. We're, we're ready, teacher. Perfect. That was that was a question. Let me just check on the other groups and uh, okay. other than that, we're going to go back, okay? Okay. okay. So... I have to collect all information. I have to gather all information and ha I have to create uh, a report. Then I have to explain that report to the main customer. In this okay. option, we are not the main customer because we only are a center. So we are hireable uh, for uh, whatever company in US or it could be in other country. Okay. So I have to create those reports and I have to present those reports to the main customer. Okay. So you still what? need uh, more time. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We are okay, teacher. You're done already. But yeah, just yeah, right. just... Okay. Let me just check with the other groups and then we're gonna go back. Okay. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. And this is the way they are. Uh, they they were selling this idea to the to the employees. Uh, I never. I think once or twice <laughs> I donate for this, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, do you need more time or are you ready? Uh, I think we're ready. <laughs> Perfect. Then let me just check with the other groups and then we're going to go back. Okay. That's good. Are you ready? Uh, hello, teacher. Uh, yes, I I have some paragraph about the Fernando company, but he told me that uh, he had to go for something because he's our uh, he is on the uh, jet schedule. Jet. Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, we're going to go back and let's see how it goes, okay? Okay. Good, good. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, start sharing. So, uh, 
I really want to hear what you want to say. Let's listen for first of all to Ana Claudia. My goodness, <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> we were trying to find out of, uh, in, in, after we finished, we were trying to find out with Heidi about the toy, toy. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was toy, Phil. Toy, Phil, toy, Phil. That is uh, what I got. But this is different, right? Uh, the thing is that there are two different. Actually, there are like 15 certifications and the most common are the TOEFL and the other is the TOEIC. Mm -hmm. And we're making the TOEIC, right? The TOEIC because it's for business, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, let me share better. <laughs> okay, good. But <laughs> Heidi um, it was uh, explaining to me about the CSR projects in her job there are multiple there are different ones but the most she like and she was explaining me she also been participating directly is the program for national scholarship uh, Banco Cuscatlan yearly provides 3,000 scholarships to uh, children living with limited uh, an economic limit limited economical resources. Uh, their headquarter is um, committed to increase and double their uh, their uh, capacity, the, the capacity they have right now. Uh, their desire is that in 2030, they can provide 30,000 scholarships. Part of this uh, close relationship with the kids is um, uh, inviting them to visit the headquarters. There are like uh, guided visits at the office. Uh, the headquarters is known as Pyramide Cuscatlan. So the kids can see by their own how is to work in a financial institution. Uh, and she was explaining to me that sometimes she is involved because they make also the employees are involved in these uh, guided guided visits. I don't know if it's the correct way to say that. Yeah. And, 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 and she was telling me how surprised and, and amazing kids were finding out how it works, uh, the autobahn, uh, how this capsule, I don't know if to call it in that name, yeah. goes from one side to another. <laughs> They were so surprised, amazing. Uh, they visit, made a guided visit in all the departments. Uh, what they try to do is to um, wake up uh, in the kids the desire to continue or find or develop careers uh, that looking for financial or economical focus. That is the program she was explaining me about because she knows more of it because she had been involved in that. Okay, very well, thank you very much. So, yeah. Heidi. Um, it's supposed that she must explain about my job? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> we misunderstood and we were talking just about her, her no, job. <laughs> you about her and her about you. No hair about hair. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I can tell you, I'm sorry, I we misunderstood. But I can tell you, in my job, the most they do is help with uh, the turtle cells. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. To and plant trees and stuff like that. I think Jose will probably better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That's, that's why you didn't the, the other way. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. will Fred is going to say something also. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Thank you. <laughs> He's a star here. He knows more. He knows more about that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> okay. The good thing is that we will get to know. So that's good. Okay. Uh, on the next group, we had uh, Francisco. Were you able to be there, right? Francisco. Teacher Francisco was with Jose Wilfredo and, and me, exactly. but I think he wasn't able to speak oh. 
-huh. Okay, so you did it just you, uh, Wilfredo and you, okay? Okay, so Jose Wilfredo, this is the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will start with uh, Juan Miguel information. Okay. Uh, well, uh, he mentioned that works or Maritime Port Authority. And they apply some CSR. Uh, they apply, they, uh, his company is on charge to apply some regulation. And also uh, for that uh, Maritime Authority like Port of Acajutla. Okay. And other reports that exist to, uh, in El Salvador. And also they have one, uh, well, they have uh, some programs uh, helping people that lives at coast, coastal board. Uh, even they say, uh, he told me that maybe one of the person uh, tell to their company to his company that have a really necessary uh, they gave some basic grains to support or survive uh during that time during a time of period um and also they he told us that during the pandemic they gave some asylum to some crew of a ship that and also he mentioned that they claim La Puntilla well they claim La Puntilla as a part of a, a part of an environmental a benefit and also mentioned that sometimes when they uh, when they heard that one person that lives at coast board and asked them for help they may they make some gather to collect um uh, maybe some basic grains okay very interesting many good things that they do so very nice now, yeah. Juan Miguel Brand, it's your turn. Okay, teacher, about uh, what we um, what we were talking about uh, with Jose Wilfredo, he was telling me that he works at Concentrics and he belongs to a department who uh, collect the data from the employees who attend calls and he presents and analyzes the data to a client, which is the owner of the account, okay? And the time that he's, he has a uh, working for, he knows about two programs uh, related to CSR, okay? One of them is about to clean in the lakes and the rivers who are a, uh, near the lake or who are uh, desembocando. I know how, I don't know how to say this word in English, uh, but they, uh, in, in the company, uh, they have this program in order to uh, make a good uh, activity, which is uh, related to help the environment and, um, uh, they do this activity with the neighbors who are near uh, from this area. Uh, and the other program was about uh, releasing, maybe I think is the best word, uh, some turtles, okay? Uh, they go to the beach and uh, they spend uh, 
some time with a person who explains all about uh, the turtles, uh, what kind of turtles are the, the, the ones who they will be released, uh, how long the eggs try to, or, or the eggs um, um, have to nacer or eclosionar, I don't know how to say, to born. Uh, to be born, yeah. Uh -huh. And after that, uh, they go with, uh, with the people uh, to, to this activity. And obviously it's a very good activity because um, you are directly um, with the environment, with the turtles and it's a good experience uh, trying to understand this, this uh, kind of animal and uh, I don't know, I think that's all. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Now we know. You know Jose Wilfredo knows a lot about the company. Yeah, <laughs> he will be the spokesman. On this one. <laughs> okay. uh, I just heard some, well, I just saw some ads through the mail. Okay. Because I receive a lot of mail, so. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> I heard some. <laughs> All so, right. Yeah. Good team, perfect. Thank you very much. All right, so the next group, uh, Danny. Uh, well, um, I was uh, with Maria Alejandra. Um, she told me that she she hasn't uh, uh, an example for this because their company, uh, her company, no. The, don't do anything for for this. <laughs> so just um I tell her my my case. Um, oh, okay. so, very well. So I'm gonna ask then Maria Alejandra. So Maria Alejandra. <laughs> okay. Uh, Danny said me that in his company uh, have a lot of compromise and develop that the community uh, and try to practice the corporate social responsibility. And that the one of the or big programs they have um, is for helping women with uh, cancer. And try and the company give all the treatment. Uh, for example, uh, chemo, fields, a uh, doctor appoint appointment. And all relation with that, the illness or for that cancer. And the second big program is a relay with education, uh, kids education that in a uh, rural schools. And the company give a package or that we have a uh, material book, notebooks, all uh, the kids need for to study and for a different school give uh, computers and the other materials. Um, maybe the this program try to support and give the better opportunity for these kids in the, don't have a possibilities to study or don't give that the resources to try to do and it is this way to the company return part of the benefits to society or low income communities and giving the opportunity to change their, their life. Can you leave that? <laughs> very good. Perfect, very interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, the next group was uh, Fernando. Were you able to? Hello, teacher. Yes, teacher. Hello. Okay, so do you have the information, Fernando? Uh, I just only know that Marcos didn't know about 
his company because he worked from home uh, all the time. So I I told you, Marcos, about my company. Okay, so there is no problem there. Yeah, I don't know how the problem. I, I don't know if it's, there is some something about. I don't know, but okay, no worries. That is fine. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, what about Marcus? Uh, what about Fernando's? Okay, okay, um, okay. Um, as a company implicated with the society, they have programs to help people. For example, um, people in need of um, this, this advocates his rights. So they offer a lot of resources. Um, also, they organize events to go and perform campaigns and go into the communities and see people to help them to build houses or paint houses or fix problems in the community. And also, um, they are a nice career for gather funds to help people. Um, and this, uh, on December, they gather toys and give to to give to the homeless kids and also they gather clothes. And so as we see this company has a strong duty with the society by helping every year and many times uh, the more needed. Okay, very interesting. Very nice. It's really nice to see how companies do different things, right? Uh, the other people, I guess, they were not able to join or to discuss about these things. So, very good. Um, I was uh, noticing that you were able to just provide the information, but you didn't write the paragraphs in the uh, in the way we should. Uh, remember that we need to write a paragraph with a topic, with details that it might be two, three, four. And then uh, the closing, right? The closing is very important. It's very important for you to try to do this kind of activities uh, because as I was telling you, uh, this is like aiming to the final, to the final uh, goal that is going to be for you to be certified. You will be certified uh, with a TOEIC. In the TOEIC test, you are not going to be asked to, to build, to create an essay. Uh, in the TOEFL, yes, when you do the TOEFL, you need to write that in the test. Uh, there is a topic that they are going to tell you for you to write an essay. So oh, it's, it's kind of difficult, but not in the topic. But anyways, one of the latest topics that we see is, is that one, essays. So everything that we have checked into that one, I mean, the uses of the article, the punctuation, do you remember commas and how we split uh, things, how we provide uh, more information, but that information can be removed from a sentence, uh, this kind of what is the part of the paragraph that you are going to have. Everything that we are checking into that one is for that one, for, for you to write, for you to write. Well, the most common is an essay, but uh, it's, it can be for, for any kind of writing that you may want to write. Uh, if you write, I mean, if you read uh, blogs or news or different kinds of readings in English, you will see that all of them, they have like uh, like an order, an organization inside of the of the reading. So that's why it's very important. Actually, in the readings that we do, uh, sometimes during the week, you are going to see that. I mean, you will see that the first part is for you to, to understand. It's like an introduction, like a topic. And sometimes it's like big introduction, sometimes like one sentence is into the paragraph. And then the, the thing is that sometimes you are going to discuss different ideas within the same uh, writing. So in that case, you are going to have different topics that might be or not related. And then each paragraph or each topics has to have that specific part. The topic like introduction, then the details, and then the, uh, uh, the closing. For the essay, sometimes it's problematic. It's like a thesis, a, a little thesis, where you will be able to, to uh, tell about the problematic and then the justification about a research or things like that. And then what is the solution? What are the possible solutions on this one? And what 
you will be doing or what society should be doing, many other things. So that is the way that I do the writings in English. So that's why it's very, very important. And um, for the topic, I don't remember exactly how many questions are there. I made that like two years ago, the last time. You know, sometimes we make that test every one, two years. I have done that like six times. And uh, it's around 500 questions, okay? Uh, and the first parts are going to be uh, listening. In the listening, there are different parts. So the difficult about that one is that you are going to listen to an audio and then answer the question, right? The problem is that it's not it's not possible to repeat the audio. You listen once, and if you didn't get it, sorry. Let's move to the next question. Then there is the second part of the listening where you are going to listen to an audio and answer two or three questions from the same audio. And you have like 15 seconds for those ones. So you need to pay attention and then try to find the solution on those ones and then listen to the next one. Then it comes the part of the grammar, then it comes the parts of the reading and uh, things like that. It's not a big deal. And since there are a lot of questions, I mean, if you miss one, don't worry. Move to the next. It's very important for you to read carefully, pay attention. And uh, the most of the readings or things that are going to there be there in the, uh, in the talk is going to be re regarding work. I mean, uh, logistics um warehousing um manufacturing uh, marketing things vocabulary related to that one so that's why we are checking a lot of things that are related to work in this course um well that will be it so it's a good idea for us to since you know what is the goal for this kind of topics that we're checking it's a good idea for you to start thinking how you will be writing how you will be organizing these kind of things Good, any questions so far? Good, we're gonna check then the attendance and it's time to go to bed, my friends. So, Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Danny Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Teacher Ileana Giselle. Ah, okay, good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. For Sonia is the one on one of today if you're there. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure. I hope you had a very wonderful weekend. Rest a lot and continue practicing English. See you next Monday. Thank you, teacher. Bye -bye. Good weekend. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good weekend, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye bye, guys.
Hello, Yvonne. Can you hear me? Are you there? Do you have questions about the course or the classes or the platform? <laughs> 